This show is made possible by the generous support of listeners just like you. Our show is about helping souls grow, prosper, and evolve. And every gift ensures that we can continue to do this. So we thank our generous supporters and also ask if you would like to be a part of supporting this important effort to bring this message of truth to the world. Please consider heading to experienceofthesoul.com slash support to be a part of supporting us by being a regular patron or making a one-time gift. Blessings on the journey, dear friend. Zen Living Realty, Support Tech Staffing, and Center for the Healing Arts present The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly show featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from diverse perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, episode 134, The One Desire That Matters, And now your host, Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. Hello and welcome to The Authentic Spiritual Journey. My name is Cynthia Alice Anderson. I am the host and I'm here today in 818 Studios with my producer. Hello everybody, this is Dave Croft. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 134 of The Authentic Spiritual Journey. I hope that you had an amazing weekend and are ready for an amazing week ahead. That's right. Happy Monday. It's still early January. So the good news is there's a lot of possibility for you this year. We we claimed last week, right, that this was, uh, for me, my yearly theme is Year of Possibility. I'm so excited about my life and my work this year, and I hope you join me in that. And if, if you're not excited yet, stay tuned because uh, we want you to dial in with us and, and get inspired. You know, that's what we hope, right, Dave? Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, we hope that, that the podcast uh, not only, you know, informs and, and helps feed you spiritually, but, but gives you a little bit of inspiration as we share from our lives and things that we're going through or things that uh, maybe some lessons we've learned that uh, right. that can help you along. Well, it is called the authentic spiritual journey, not the perfect spiritual that's journey. That's right. That's right. Because there is no such thing as the perfect no, spiritual journey. No. If anybody tells you they have it completely figured out, you know, don't walk, run the other way. Um, because we're all in this together. We we do know some spiritual principles, though. And what we've learned is that as we live by those principles, as our lives are guided by those principles, we become more and more aware of what matters most. We become more engaged with our soul. And when we're doing that and we're seeking to act in the best interest of our soul, then life does get better and better. That's right. So, you know, this is our prayer for you as we're kicking off 2021. And also, please do share, feel free to share this show uh, with a friend, you can um, you can actually just text a link. It's so cool. I love today's technology. To it's so easy to share a show, whether it's on social media or just share it with a friend. Especially if there's a show that really speaks to you, you know, send them this as a support because that's what we want to be. That's you right. know, the daily affirmations, the the Friday uh, meditations. There's so many ways. We are giving you support on the spiritual journey, and we're honored and happy to do so. Yeah, absolutely. And, and before we get too deep into it, um, yeah. speaking of support, um, can we talk a little bit about um, the the our our change for twenty twenty one in in ways that people support the channel? Right, and you know it's pretty exciting to me because in a very short amount of time, not only have I been able to start a corporation, but also to have a nonprofit arm. So uh, in the past, what was happening is when you gave a gift to Patreon, you you know you would get a receipt and that was great. And we love Patreon and we bless them. But now when you give a donation, it is a tax deductible donation because it goes right into our nonprofit, which is wonderful because this is a virtual ministry. So anytime you give now, if you support the show, uh, because it is a free will gift, you're not paying for a service. You know, the the podcast is free. Mm -hmm. So as you give a donation, it becomes tax deductible. And as soon as you give it, you get a receipt, uh, you know, for the gift that you can save for your taxes. So it can become a tax deduction. So we are really happy and uh, feel very thrilled and honored to be able to provide you with that. Yeah, and and the name of that company is the Soul Works Group Incorporated. So if you see if you cl- go over to experienceofthesoul.com/support and right. you click on that um, 
to make a one-time donation or to set up a, a monthly amount, you will see that name, uh, the Soul Works Group. Now, now what this means, and 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 uh, Cynthia Alice, you can help help me uh, if I if I if I'm off base here. But what that means is that the Patreon will be going away. Is, right. Isn't that correct? Right. So yes, we're, we're the Patreon is going away. Exactly. And so what the way I was able to um, start a nonprofit arm, I'll tell you, is with New Horizons Foundation. And I've just told another individual about them as well. Uh, they came highly recommended through a group I work with in Loveland, Colorado. And uh, it the New Horizons Foundation does exactly what I needed. They help uh, you know, start up nonprofits, get going right away, and they're all about uh, supporting souls on the journey. They have artists, they have uh, ministries, you know, all different types of people that have nonprofits and um, that are not operating necessarily under a larger umbrella. So New Horizons Foundation is the umbrella that we're operating under. So it's enabled us in that way to take donations. So yes, my corporation is called the Soul Works Group Incorporated. And then New Horizons Foundation is the organization we partner with to be able to, um, you know, take tax deductible donations. So yeah. So if, if you are currently a Patreon supporter, first of all, Thank you so much. Thank you thank so you, we, thank you. We have, We're we so have, grateful. We have patrons that have been with us since day one, and uh, we encourage you if you're currently a Patreon patron to head over to experienceofthesoul.com slash support and uh, and re re register. I, I I suppose would be a way to kind of think about that is to to switch over from your Patreon support over to this new tax deductible way it's uh, it's a great benefit to everybody uh, with over the next few months we will be winding down the patreon page so uh, so if you're wondering kind of where that went uh, that's kind of well, what's happening there Yes, yes, and thank you, thank you. I mean, without your support, we wouldn't be on the air. So that's 100% uh, it's accurate. it's pretty amazing uh, the tremendous support we've received. So thank you so much. Thank you. So today, uh, hey Dave, why don't you give us our title for today? Uh, the show for today is the one desire that matters. The, the one, one desire. desire that matters. That yes, matters. yes. Friends, I love talking about prosperity and. I've been reflecting on, you know, so much of my work and I do a prosperity capsule every Wednesday and I love to help people, you know, begin to know how to manifest, how to act in the best interest of their soul, how to, uh, you know, release old ways of being so new pros- new prosperity can come forward. But I can tell you there is really one desire that matters, the number one desire, and that is the desire for God the desire for God, because from God, all good comes. From God, all good comes. The scriptures say, seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you. So in our world today, I teach so much prosperity because we um, it's it's, it's so important for us to know that we are co-creating our life with God. It's not like we just sit here and expect God to do everything. We're an important part of the equation, right? So in in this show, you are also a very important part of the equation. So early on, it's easy to start with stuff because, okay, we all have to have money to live. We all have to have clothes. We all have to, you know, we have to be able to pay our bills. So often when we talk about manifestation and we talk about prosperity, we're thinking about the material, And that's fine and good. But what we often forget is to apply those same principles to knowing God. And the longer I've been on the journey, which is, you know, over 30 years now, the longer I've been on the journey, what I really know is that God will give you all you want till all you want is God. God will give you all you want till all you want is God. And you know, if you search the scriptures, you'll find the point of the Hebrew Bible, often called the Old Testament and the New Testament, is basically put God first or seek God first. This is because all good comes from God. The scriptures say every good and perfect thing comes down from the Father of lights, 
Oh, Dave, I can't remember that scripture. Please look it up for me. Say every it. good and perfect thing, it says every good and perfect thing comes down from the Father of lights. I think in whom there is no... So yeah, you'll have to look uh, James, that up. James 1, 17. And what does it say? Uh, let me get to the NRSV. Yeah, every good and perfect thing. Uh, every comes... good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of, of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Yes, beautiful. Read that one more time. James 1, 17. Uh, actually, that's... Uh, that is the NIV. Oh, that's fine. NIV works uh, great. The New Revised Standard uh, is every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Beautiful. Yes, beautiful. So w- we want to desire God. And many of us have said, oh, yeah, I, I, you know, I want to know God. And then when things start changing and moving, we go, whoa, what is this? And, well, I didn't want this. Well, you said you wanted to know God. <laughs> so, so desire, you know, you've heard me say before that desire, as Charles Fillmore put it, the co-founder of Unity, said desire is the onward impulse of the ever-evolving soul. The onward impulse of the ever-evolving soul. So as we grow, as we mature in consciousness, that desire always pulls us forward. Well, this is what I was meaning previously in this show when I was saying that, you know, in the beginning we learn to manifest things. So if we've never learned to manifest that, that's important to do because you need to be, you need to know how to co-create your life with God. It's important to know how powerful you are. It's important to know that you can uh, create the life that you want and deserve. And so these are all wonderful things. I'm not speaking of it negatively, but what I'm speaking of it as is that it has its place in consciousness that we don't want to stop with just getting things. We want to remember and understand that the main thing we need, the one desire that really matters is the desire for God. And of course, all desire uh, for the things is really a desire for God. Right? It's like all of us have this like God-shaped a uh, hole right in the middle of our hearts. And until we understand what goes there, we're always going to be grabbing for more. We're going to be grabbing for more stuff, more love, more whatever we happen to be addicted to. Right. And that, uh, that, that it's, it's like a, it's like a false substitute that we're always grabbing for. But like in the early days of learning that it's fine. But most of the people I know who listen to this show have been on the journey for quite some time, and they've had a little life experience. Amen? Most of the people listening to the show are not 20 years old. Most of them are 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s even, 70s even, 80s even, which means you've lived life to the point that you know you probably have all the stuff you need already. So then what? So the one desire that matters is the desire for God. God will give you all you want till all you want is God. In my prayer and study time, I was really guided to see the the uh, root word. You know, I, I love etymology, right, which is the study of, uh, the, of words. It's like the origin of words. And it's so simple now <laughs> with the internet. It used to be very arduous to, to try to find the etymology of words. But I looked up the word desire. Desire. And the early Latin, de sidere, really means, meant initially to long for, to expect, and to await what the stars will bring. In other words, desire in its origin was holy. And now in our culture, when we think of desire, we often first go to desire of a sexual nature. But desire in its beginnings was about the holy, awaiting what the stars will bring. I I think that's beautiful. So this is how I think of desire as very, very holy. 
we've talked about desire a number of times, and it's important to keep bringing up because we live in a culture that is always about getting and comparing to others. And uh, we also live in a culture where everything we want, we can get, you know, in one click, two clicks away. <laughs> I forget, what does Amazon call it? Like one click shopping, you know, yeah, by, by now. now. <laughs> Which, you know, God bless Amazon. What a fantastic business model. They, they used to have those little buttons, you know. You could you could have one product assigned to a physical button that you could put up like uh, laundry detergent or something. You just press the button and it shows up. <laughs> I know. It's, it's really great. It's really great. Great. We love Amazon for that. <laughs> so, but because of that, um, you know, we're used to getting what we want instantly. And what I also know in our culture is addiction has never been higher. <laughs> I know that there's never been more depression and anxiety. So what I know is getting these things is not helping every aspect of our lives. As a matter of fact, it's making it worse. So, I mean, I love the fact that it's easy to get what I need from the store, you know, or whatever, especially now during COVID when nobody really wants to go shopping. We're all ordering online, whether we want to be or not, most of us. So, I mean, there's wonderful aspects to it, but Usually, our world at large is operating from a lower nature. And what do I mean by the lower nature? Well, I mean, you know, should I say this? The seven deadly sins. The So we're, the lower nature is when we are living from, you know, the real human level. So if we're in addiction, if we have been caught in addiction from alcohol or drugs, well, when we desire alcohol, obviously that's not a holy desire. But think about it. What is a higher desire if you're desiring alcohol? Well, alcohol is often called what? Spirits. So even in the desire for alcohol, there is a holiness there. So as I say, bless your desires and honor your desires. Well, if you have lower desires and you just do whatever you want, that will not be a blessing in your life. That's going to bring more pain, more illness, more guilt, more sadness, more grief, uh, uh, more depression. Because on some level, we all know when we reach for these things that are of the lower nature, that we don't, we don't, we know we shouldn't do it, and we don't need it. So it feeds into this aspect of not good enough. But. What I want you to hear me say is even in that desire to drink, to use drugs, there is something holy there. There is something holy there. And there was this um, this great, uh, she was called an analytical psychologist. She did a lot of great work and research. Her name was Marion Woodman. She died uh, in 2018. But she used to talk a lot about this. And she would say that when you have this lower desire, if you don't, answer that desire. In other words, if you don't try to fulfill that lower desire, if you can, she called it just holding that, then something um, new will come forward for you. In other words, something higher will be born out of that. So, you know, this is a really advanced idea that just because I want something, maybe it's not a good idea to have it. <laughs> because our culture is saying, get it, get it, get it. Get all you want, the one that dies with the most toys wins, the bigger house, the more cars, the more money, the more stuff. Have it, have it, have it, have it. You can have it. Alcohol, sure, no problem. We'll bring it right to your door. No problem. What is it you want? Drugs, we'll find a way to get it to you. Yep, no problem. But if we don't answer that lower desire, something holy will come forward for us. And so... This is where it takes tremendous spiritual strength and support from a whole community of people to be able to live this way. But this is what is asked of us. So the one desire that matters is the desire for God. But I want to assure you, if you're fighting your demons right now of these lower desire things, something holy is there for you. Something holy is there for you. Out of this lower desire, if you can hold and not, you know, jump into that desire, then something higher, something new, something better is going to come forward for you. 
something more advanced, something of higher consciousness that will help you move forward another day, another step. Right. So, and then, and then you can feel good about yourself. And then you can know that you're doing what it is you can do for your life and for your health and for, um, you know, your loved ones. It's so, so important to live from this higher, more holy desire than this lower aspect of self. So, before we go into a short break, I want to remind you God will give you all you want to all you want is God. And we'll be back right after this. We'll return to the program in just a few moments, but first, we wanted to give a special word of thanks to our podcast partner, Zen Living Realty. Zen Living Realty's mission is to mindfully serve, connect, and positively impact their customers, partners, and community through their Zen approach to real estate. Their vision is to be the most trusted real estate brokerage in the Central Florida area. You can reach Zen Living Realty at zenlivingrealty.com or call 407-800-2717. We'd also like to give a special word of thanks to Support Tech Staffing. Support Tech Staffing is an innovative staffing agency built on the principle of caring about employers and employees as they navigate these new workforce and workplace challenges. If you're an employer, they want to be your human resource partner and help with the changes needed during the pandemic. If you're a candidate, they want to become your lifelong career agent to help you grow into your fullest potential. Support Tech prioritizes support over volume, integrity over profits, and will treat your business and your career as if it was their own. You can learn more at supporttechstaffing.com. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T-E-K staffing.com. And finally, we want to give a special word of thanks to Center for the Healing Arts. Center for the Healing Arts is one of the first dedicated group practices devoted to challenging, supportive, and nurturing therapy. Their dedicated therapists have a wide range of expertise, including relationship and couples therapy, individual therapy, addictions, neurofeedback, play therapy for children, adolescents, and families, and therapy for blended family issues. They also regularly offer day-long intensive workshops for relationships, addiction recovery, adult children of alcoholics, and healing trauma in the LGBTQ plus community. For more information, head over to centerforthehealingarts.com or call 407-657-8555, extension 1. We now return you to this week's episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey with your host, Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. Welcome back. We're glad you're with us. And I hope you were thinking about on the break some of the things we've been discussing first half. This is a little bit deeper show, and I think we're all ready for it. Um, 2021 really has such a potential for us uh, this year. And I am really focusing my life on the spiritual as never before. And that's saying something because, friends, I have been dedicated to my spiritual journey for you know, over 20 years, daily practices, uh, nightly meditations, uh, forgiveness work, and um, it's reached a whole new level, and it is out of my desire to know God, and I will tell you, I do know God. I know God. I don't have to uh, uh, read about God. I know God, and we are in communion every day, and I know today when I say, God will give you all you want to all you want is God— that this is such truth, and it will really bless your life as you begin to know this and experience this firsthand. No, no minister can give it to you. No spiritual community can give it to you. This is yours to do on your own. And and you know, I want to go back a little bit to what we were talking about in terms of, you know, what we all want to get, and and the the desire to have, you know, it's really part of being human, and, you know, my good friend Edwin Gaines, Reverend Edwin Gaines, who wrote the book Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity, I love that book. I love prosperity teachings. I love knowing how to manifest, so don't leave this show going, oh, so I shouldn't try to manifest? No. Manifest, manifest, manifest. Yes, learn to manifest. Learn to be a powerful co-creator. Yes, we love that. It's how we learn to listen to God. It's how we learn to listen to our intuition. All of those things are wonderful. But what I also know about Edwin Gaines is she's the most uh, amazing spiritual student I know. 
because she's also used all these tools to know God. So I want to just encourage you to go deeper in your quest uh, of spirituality and your quest for more prosperity to know that God will give you all you want, right? To all you want is God. So I think, too, every time we want to have more, um, there's a few things going on. Uh, Many of us are trying to heal childhood traumas like where we didn't have. You know, I've shared many times that You know, I grew up in a very large family, and in general, our needs were taken care of, but there were times where I felt like there wasn't enough. I felt like there wasn't enough love to go around. I felt like there wasn't enough food to go around, and I had my own journey with that. That's different from any of my siblings. You know, they had their own journey, but so when I was learning to manifest early on, it was so important for me to realize that I was worth manifesting, that I was worth co-creating with God, that God cared about me enough that we were working together in creating and forming, you know, the good in my life. So it is so important to learn those steps, to learn to manifest good, to, you know, desire something and then to have it. Because it is, it's from uh, our childhood journey, sometimes we're healing from traumas, sometimes it's even past life uh, journeys that are informing us this lifetime, and there's something for us to heal. So that is absolutely good and absolutely fine. But we always want to keep in mind that in general, the, the desire to have more is really the desire to be more. Right, So we just don't ever want to lose sight of the one desire that really matters, and that's the desire for God. So we think as we want to have more, but ultimately we want to be more. And what, I, what I've found and what is so amazing about this journey I've been on is that the more I know God, the more I have. It's It's hard to explain it in words because it it defies logic. How much I give away, how much I, um, how much I am focused on God and how much is coming forward for me. So I cannot say enough about the desire for God, desire to know God. And Um, a very difficult aspect of knowing God is that you also begin to know your human self. And sometimes that gets very hard to see. That gets very hard to see. I was sharing with Dave at the break that, um, that, uh, part of my journey this last year. So I had a lot of change and it was a wonderful change, but that much change was stressful. And so because of that, I uh, did some uh, activities that I knew were not great for me, like, I mean, <laughs> nothing bad like the drugs or anything, but, uh, but it was bad for me because I was not eating as well. I was eating more uh, kind of junk food on the go, and I know that does not work well for me or my body, but it was uh, in a sense of overwhelm at times that I started you know, creating these new, these, uh, going back to these old habits rather than the new healthy habits I had for myself. So what happened? Well, I started feeling fatigued. I started feeling run down. And of course, I gained weight. Well, I didn't want to do any of those things. I didn't want to do any of those things. So as I started becoming conscious, I said, you know what? I need to check these things out. I need to, uh, I need to uh, check in with my doctor. Well, you know what? Those things had impact. So uh, I'm like you, I'm on this journey with you, and uh, this has been an important time over the last several months as my relationship with God is deep, and it's like, well, why have I, why did I do those things? What was, you know, what was missing that I was doing those things? Was I trying to fill some need, you know? Uh, then my mom passed away. That was also stressful. So, you know, it's like, but every day I'm in contact with God, and every day I'm learning more and more what's mine to do. So friends, as I talk about these things, remember I'm on this journey with you, right? We're just because we're on the air. It doesn't mean our life is perfect. Dave, can I have an amen? Amen to that. Right. (laughs) So, so what I, what happened then is I got to know some of my human self and some of those coping mechanisms I didn't like, you know, that I reached for food or that I reached for sugar. Um, I, 
you know, I used to be so disciplined about that. And I just lost some of that discipline. So as I got to know God and I was really becoming more an observer of myself, I said, oh, no, I this is not good. I've got to back off some of these things. And, you know, that was a hard truth. But it had to be looked at. But my desire for God really is what got me there. My desire to know God. Because, you know, when I wasn't feeling good, it was like, okay, well, what's this about? What do I need to do? So being an observer of my own self, you know, through my God relationship, through my God connection was really important. The desire for God will help you know your human self, your finite self, but it will also, of course, bring in your infinite self. And that's really the greatest gift you can have, is to be in connection with your infinite self. The scriptures in John 1, um, John 1 was a scripture I memorized when I was about my son's age. I was about 13. And it was the first whole chapter, you know, I'd ever memorized. And there's a verse in there that says, In him was light, and, and the light was the light of all people. And that verse really explains your infinite self. So the scriptures themselves say, The light of the Christ is the light that you are. There are a lot of Christians today that don't realize that. They're so focused on being sinners that they forget to own their light. And our brand of spirituality is really about seeing that light, owning that light, you know, living that light in the world. And yes, yeah, still becoming responsible for the ways that we fall short, which is all sin means. So the desire for God will help you know your human self, your finite self, but will also bring you into your infinite self. And this is very, very important because as you connect with your infinite self, you can begin to act in the best interest of your soul. And I often uh, speak of this, acting in the best interest of your soul and being an observer of your own life or an observer of your soul. But acting in the best interest of your soul is pretty simple. It means that the decisions that we make are moving our life forward on the journey rather than keeping us stuck or stuck or pulling us back, right? Acting in the best interest of your soul means the things that I do, my behaviors, my thoughts, my attitudes, my votes, my, my way of being in the world, my way of relating is good for my soul in that it's moving my journey forward rather than keeping me stuck or moving me backwards. You know, I've heard people say, oh, you can't go back on the journey. I go, oh, yeah, you can. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can. I've seen it many, many times. Many times. So when we move into the infinite self of us, it means we are connected with God and we are aware and we know our God connection. And then we begin to see God everywhere. Every morning, I speak with God in a way that I hadn't ever, and this is new in the last, probably what, in the last year with how I commune with God. It's really, to say I speak to God is not even the right way of describing it. It's so beautiful. There's this inner connection where God is speaking to me and I am speaking to God and it's clear. So I can't help but make better decisions and act in the best interest of my soul you know, as this is happening. When we, we often talk about meditation, you know, and the need to connect with God on a regular basis. And we say, yes, prayer is wonderful. We pray and we love to pray, but without meditation, without being quiet and listening, you know, we're not going to be able to be an observer of our own soul. And what happens as we meditate, what happens as we, like in my case, commune with God in my garden in the morning, then as, as that is happening, well, we're shown things, we're told things, we intuit things, we feel things, 
and these guidances, these intuitions, these feelings, this knowing, then helps us move forward in a way that is full of love and peace and joy and hope and gratitude. So this is what I mean by acting in the best interest of our soul. Like, are you, you know, put very simply, are you going around and doing things, you know, that are are focused spiritually? Or are you going around creating all this bad karma because you're, you're, you know, biting people's head off, you're, you're, you're pissed all the time, you're complaining to everybody who will listen. Well, this is not a life based in spirituality, right? This is a life based in the ego. This is a life based in the destructive ego, rather the constructive soul of you, rather than your infinite self. So we seek, we desire to know God so that we can, yes, live from a better place, and then that living creates a better world to live in. I mean, imagine if everybody walked around only centered in their ego, what would the world look like? But when there are people, and and they're regular people, living from the soul, doing kindnesses, bringing joy, you know, bringing hope to children and those in need, oh my goodness, that's what changes the world. But first, we desire to know God. Knowing God is the one desire that matters. God will give you all you want till all you want is God. Friends, I know you're doing the deep, deep work of your soul. I know because I've heard from many of you, and I know you're growing I know you're seeing yourself in new ways, and I want to encourage you as you do come into contact with the finite self of you, you know, the pieces that are hard to see, to really have grace and to love yourself through this time. I also want to encourage you to reach out for spiritual support. You know, this is what I do. I'm here for you to reach out for spiritual support as you're going through this time. As you become an observer of your own soul, you will be inspiring yourself to live a better life. You won't look to others. You'll look to yourself. You won't have to get somebody else's approval. You'll know you have it. It won't matter if people around you like it. You'll like it. And you'll be connected with God, and it'll be holy movement. You won't be climbing over somebody to to advance yourself. The way will be made clear for you. Living from the soul is so different from living from ego. And there is so much freedom, so much joy, so much love. Remember, friend, if you look back at 2020 and you say, oh, it wasn't my best year ever. I don't know anybody. It was their best year ever. 2020 was a rough year, but 2021, we're in a new year. There is new, new possibility for us. So the good news is we're here for you. We support you every week, every day with a show. As you move forward, as you do this work, just pick up your phone, turn us on, and we'll be there. We'll be there supporting you, blessing you, lifting you up, encouraging you on the journey. Because we believe in you. We know that God in you knows what is yours to do, when and how to do it. We know that God in you knows how to be an observer of your own soul and make amazing choices for your life and your work and your family. We know that God in you knows when to say yes and when to say no. We know that you are the light of the world in expression. So we encourage you, dear friend, to really tap into God, commune with with God on a daily basis. And as you experience those lower desires, and we all do and we all will, to see if you can hold it so that something new, something better, something higher comes forward for you. And remember, anytime that older energy wants to come in, remember that it's that desire to have more is really the desire to be more, right? So as you desire God, you will know more of yourself, more of your goodness, and you will be a blessing in the world. So we thank you. We bless you on the journey, dear friend. We're always grateful that you join us for the show. And we also are grateful when you share the show Um, We're happy that it supports you. We are blessed beyond measure that you feel so supported that you give to the show. We We are blessed by you as well. So blessings, blessings on the journey, dear friend, and we hope to see you very soon. 
Many blessings. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey presented by Zen Living Realty, Support Tech Staffing, and Center for the Healing Arts. This channel is also made possible because of listeners just like you. If you would like to support the channel with your tax-deductible contribution on an ongoing basis or through a one-time gift, head over to experienceofthesoul.com slash support. The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2021, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Dave Croft and used with permission from RR Hot Publishing. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios.